so far we have learnt how to build amplifiers using MOS transistor, the basic common source amplifier as well as more sophisticated control sources which employ negative feedback. Okay. In most of these cases, the preferred way of biasing the MOS transistor was using a current source that is to bias a MOS transistor at a given current rather than at a given gate source voltage. Now, the question is how do we realize these current sources? Now, we have some idea how to do that. A MOS transistor operating in saturation region itself behaves like a current source, right? So, for instance, let us say that we had to bias a transistor. I will consider the case of uh, source feedback biasing. Then, we have a current source I naught over here which with negative feedback establishes a current of I naught in the transistor M 1. Now, how do we realize this current source I naught? Now, there are some ways of realizing a single current source that I would not go into, but at least we know the following. We know the current mirror structure okay, that is given a single current source I naught. we can make many, many current sources. Okay. This line here going through the MOS transistor means that it is connected to this gate as well as that gate. Okay. So, now we can uh, replicate this any number of times and all of them will draw a current I naught as long as they are in saturation region and we can use one such device to bias this. Instead of this I naught, we can have a MOS transistor. It is assumed that these are all identical to each other. Okay. So, this will do the job, but the picture is somewhat incomplete because with the transistors that we have, we can only have currents that are being pulled from a node. What I mean is, we do not have a current source of this type, where both terminals are accessible to us. Okay. The current is drawn from this node, current is pushed into this node, but both of these terminals are not accessible to us. What we have is a picture of this type, where this side of the current is grounded and we can only have currents, which are being pulled from some node. Now, if you look at uh, the case of drain feedback, The circuit was like this, where this is the supply voltage V D D and current has to be pushed into this node. Okay, we need a current source in this polarity. How do we make that? Now, it turns out that with the kind of device that we have, we already defined this device. This is the N MOS transistor. I used to call it MOS transistor, but it turns out the device that we have been considering so far, which operates with V G S and V D S greater than 0 and current flowing from drain to source. This is known as N type MOS transistor or usually it is called the N MOS transistor. Okay. Now, with this type of uh, transistor, with an NMOS transistor, it is hard to solve this problem. Okay, It may be done, but it is quite difficult. But thanks to technology, we also have the complementary type of transistor, which is the P type of uh, MOS transistor. Okay, And it is called the P MOS transistor. Okay. Now, it turns out that this has exactly complementary characteristics to the NMOS transistor. It is denoted by this symbol and I will draw the source on top and the drain at the bottom. I will explain later why this is the usual convention. And in this case, the current flows from source to drain. Okay, I will still call it I D but in case of the NMOS transistor, it flows from drain to source, whereas here it flows from source to drain. And this is the complementary type and this is quite useful for making current sources of this type. And of course, it is not only useful for making current sources, you can also make amplifiers using that. So, what we will do, 
is now to discuss the characteristics of this PMOS transistor and see how to set up the operating point and how to realize amplifiers using the PMOS transistor. Okay. Just for the sake of comparison, I will put down the NMOS transistor here. This is the drain, gate and source and we choose the gate source voltage and the drain source voltage as the independent variables while describing the current ID, the drain current that flows from drain to source and the gate current is 0. This is the NMOS transistor and in case of the PMOS transistor, Again, I have drawn the source on top and drain at the bottom and gate is here. We choose the source gate voltage VSG and the source drain voltage VSD as the independent variables and that describes the drain current ID which flows from drain to source. So, you should know these conventions so that when you uh, write down the current equations, it comes out in the correct direction. Okay. Okay. The NMOS transistor we said operates with VGS greater than 0 and VDS greater than 0. That is VGS and VDS are positive in this polarity and ID is also greater than 0. That is it always flows from drain to source. And exactly the same is uh, true here. That is VSG and VSD are greater than 0. So, that is in this polarity we will have positive voltages. In fact, that is why it is uh, usual convention to draw the PMOS transistor with the source on top and drain at the bottom. Typically, we like to draw circuits in a way that as we go up the page, the voltage levels increase. Okay. Now, this cannot be followed for every circuit, especially when you have uh, AC voltages alternating quantities, but at least for the operating point as you go from bottom to top, the voltages will increase. So, in case of a PMOS transistor, the source is at a higher voltage than the drain. So, you draw the source on top and drain at the bottom and I D of course, is positive in this direction. I will continue to call it drain current, but this current flows from source to drain. Okay. Now, if you look at uh, textbooks, there is a variety of choices for describing the PMOS. The NMOS is of course, always described with VGS and VDS and so on. Now, sometimes the PMOS stuff equations are written with VGS, with VGS being negative and so on. Okay, but we will stick to this so that all these quantities come out to be positive. As long as you know which direction it is in, it should be fine. Okay. Now, the model of the PMOS transistor is exactly same as the model of the NMOS transistor. The values of the parameters may be different, that is all. So, this I D in a PMOS transistor is 0 if V S G is less than V T. And again, uh, this is technology dependent, but for the most frequently used uh, flavor of the transistor, the threshold voltage is also greater than 0. Okay. And sometimes, to distinguish between the threshold voltage of N and PMOS, we will start writing VTP for the PMOS threshold and VTN for the NMOS threshold. Okay. They could be different from each other in a given process on the same chip. Okay. So, it is a similar phenomenon like in the NMOS. Uh, the voltage difference between these two VSD has to be greater than some amount for the transistor to turn on. Otherwise, the current will be 0 and it is equal to mu p c ox w by l v s g minus v t times v s d minus v s d square by 2. Okay. And this holds when the transistor is on that is v s g is greater than v t p and the source drain voltage is less than V S G minus V T P. Okay, and this of course corresponds to the linear or triode region. Okay. You can see that again the equations are exactly the same. Instead of V G S we have V S G and instead of V D S we have V S D. That's all. Okay. And also this parameter we denoted mu p c ox, the mobility of holes or the p type carriers is different from the mobility mu n of electrons. So, this we use a different symbol for mu p c ox is different from mu n c ox, it is usually uh, smaller than mu n c ox. Okay. 
also in the other region we have mu p c ox by 2 w by l v s g minus v t square okay this holds when the transistor is on of course v s g is greater than v t p and the source drain voltage is greater than v s g minus v t p that is this corresponds to the saturation region okay so you can see that uh, the model looks exactly the same the only thing is the parameters are different vtp could be different from vtn and mu pc ox will be different from mu nc ox and usually substantially smaller okay so if you draw the characteristics of the pmos transistor they will look similar to the nmos transistor let me take some typical parameters let me say mu pc ox is 25 microampere per volt square okay and w by l equals 1 okay and i'll take the pmos threshold voltage vtp to be 1 volt as well and with this i can draw id versus vsg of the pmos transistor in saturation region this is in volts and this is in microamperes you are already familiar with what the shape looks like up to the threshold voltage it will be off and there will be no current and after that it increases as the square of vsg right or vsg minus vt to be precise and you can work this out for uh, yourself that at vsg equals 2 volts we'll have 12.5 microamps of current okay and at vsd equal to 3 volts it will be 50 microamps so we'll be here and there and there okay so at vsd equals 4 volts we'll have 112.5 microamperes so in saturation region it will be like that okay yeah i'll just write that saturation region is assumed here you can also draw id versus vds okay and the shape of course is similar to what you see with an nmos transistor when vsg is less than vtp we have no current in the transistor when vsg equals 2 volts the current rises up to 12.5 microamperes and stays there in saturation region when vsg equals 3 volts it rises up to 50 microamperes and stays that way in saturation region and when vsg equals 4 volts it goes that way okay and this is the boundary between triode and saturation regions okay so essentially everything is exactly the same in a pmos transistor as in an nmos transistor the polarity of voltages are reversed and the current is also reversed it flows from source to drain instead of from drain to source and the other thing that is different is the value of the parameters themselves okay this mu pc ox and vtp could be different from mu nc ox and vtn so uh, those th things are there but qualitatively the behavior of the pmos transistor is exactly the same as that of the nmos transistor except for reverse polarities 
This also means that every circuit that we realized using the NMOS transistor can also be realized using the PMOS transistor. Okay? So, that will be the subject of subsequent lessons.